Article 1401. The action for annulment of contracts shall be extinguished when the thing which is the object thereof is lost through the fraud or fault of the person who has a right to institute the proceedings. If the right of action is based upon the incapacity of any one of the contracting parties, the loss of the thing shall not be an obstacle to the success of the action, unless said loss took place through the fraud or fault of the plaintiff. 1314a. Article 1402. As long as one of the contracting parties does not restore what in virtue of the decree of annulment he is bound to return, the other cannot be compelled to comply with what is incumbent upon him. 1308. Chapter 8. An Enforceable Contracts. N. Article 1403. The following contracts are unenforceable, unless they are ratified. 1. Those entered into in the name of another person by one who has been given no authority or legal representation, or who has acted beyond his powers. 2. Those that do not comply with the statute of frauds as set forth in this number. In the following cases an agreement hereafter made shall be unenforceable by action, unless the same, or some note or memorandum thereof be in writing and subscribed by the party charged, or by his agent, evidence, therefore, of the agreement cannot be received without the writing, or a secondary evidence of its contents. a. An agreement that by its terms is not to be performed within a year from the making thereof. b. A special promise to answer for the debt default, or miscarriage of another. C. An agreement made in consideration of marriage, other than a mutual promise to marry. D. An agreement for the sale of goods, chattels or things in action, at a price not less than 500 pesos, unless the buyer accept and receive part of such goods and chattels, or the evidences, or some of them, of such things in action or pay at the time some part of the purchase money. But when a sale is made, by auction and entry is made by the auctioneer in his sales book, at the time of the sale, of the amount and kind of property sold, terms of sale, price, names of the purchasers and person on whose account the sale is made, it is a sufficient memorandum, e. an agreement for the leasing for a longer period than one year, or for the sale of real property or of an interest therein. FAA representation is to the credit of a third person. 3. Those where both parties are incapable of giving consent to a contract. Article 1404. Unauthorized contracts are governed by Article 1317 and the Principles of Agency. In Title X of this book. Article 1405. Contracts infringing the statute of frauds, referred to in no. 2 of Article 1403, are ratified by the failure to object to the presentation of oral evidence to prove the same, or by the acceptance of benefit under them. Article 1406, when a contract is enforceable under the statute of frauds, and a public document is necessary for its registration in the Registry of Deeds, the parties may avail themselves of the right under Article 1357. Article 1407. In a contract where both parties are incapable of giving consent, express or implied ratification by the parent, or guardian, as the case may be, of one of the contracting parties shall give the contract the same effect as if only one of them were incapacitated. If ratification is made by the parents or guardians, as the case may be, of both contracting parties, the contract shall be validated from the inception. Article 1408. An enforceable contract cannot be assailed by third persons. Chapter 9. Void and inexistent contracts. Article 1409. The following contracts are inexistent and void from the beginning. 1. Those whose cause, object or purpose is contrary to law, morals, good customs public order or public policy. 2. Those which are absolutely simulated or fictitious. 
3. Those whose cause or object did not exist at the time of the transaction. 4. Those whose object is outside the commerce of men. 5. Those which contemplate an impossible service. 6. Those where the intention of the parties relative to the principal object of the contract cannot be ascertained. 7. Those expressly prohibited or declared void by law. These contracts cannot be ratified. Neither can the right to set up the defense of illegality be waived. Article 1410. The action or defense for the declaration of the inexistence of a contract does not prescribe. Article 1411. When the nullity proceeds from the illegality of the cause or object of the contract and the act constitutes a criminal offense, both parties being in peri delicto, they shall have no action against each other, and both shall be prosecuted. Moreover, the Provisions of the Penal Code relative to the disposal of effects or instruments of a crime shall be applicable to the things or the price of the contract. This rule shall be applicable when only one of the parties is guilty, but the innocent one may claim what he has given, and shall not be bound to comply with his promise. 1305 Article 1412. If the act in which the unlawful or forbidden cause consists does not constitute a criminal offense, the following rules shall be observed. 1. When the fault is on the part of both contracting parties, neither may recover what he has given by virtue of the contract, or demand the performance of the other's undertaking. 2. When only one of the contracting parties is at fault. He cannot recover what he has given by reason of the contract, or ask for the fulfillment of what has been promised him. The other, who is not at fault, may demand the return of what he has given without any obligation to comply his promise. 1306. Article 1413. Interest paid in excess of the interest allowed by the usury laws may be recovered by the debtor, with interest thereon from the date of the payment. Article 1414. When money is paid or property delivered for an illegal purpose, the contract may be repudiated by one of the parties before the purpose has been accomplished or before any damage has been caused to a third person. In such case, the courts may, if the public interest will thus be subserved, Allow the party repudiating the contract to recover the money or property. Article 1415. Where one of the parties to an illegal contract is incapable of giving consent, the courts may, if the interest of justice, so demands allow recovery of money or property delivered by the incapacitated person. Article 1416. When the agreement is not illegal per se but is merely prohibited, and the prohibition by the law is designed for the protection of the plaintiff, he may, if public policy is thereby enhanced, recover what he has paid or delivered. Article 1417. When the price of any article or commodity is determined by statute or by authority of law, any person paying any amount in excess of the maximum price allowed may recover such excess. Article 1418. When the law fixes or authorizes the fixing of the maximum number of hours of labor, and a contract is entered into, whereby a laborer undertakes to work longer than the maximum thus fixed, he may demand additional compensation for service, rendered beyond the time limit. Article 1419. When the law sets or authorizes the setting of a minimum wage for laborers, and a contract is agreed upon by which a laborer accepts a lower wage, he shall be entitled to recover the deficiency. Article 1420. In case of a divisible contract, if the illegal terms can be separated from the legal ones, the latter may be enforced. Article 1421. The defense of illegality of contract is not available to third persons whose interests are not directly affected. 
Article 1422, a contract which is the direct result of a previous illegal contract, is also void and inexistent. Title 3. Natural Obligations. Article 1423, obligations are civil or natural. Civil obligations give a right of action to compel their performance. Natural obligations, not being based on positive law but on equity and natural law, do not go grant a right of action to enforce their performance but after voluntary fulfillment by the obliger. They authorize the retention of what has been delivered or rendered by reason thereof. Some natural obligations are set forth in the following articles. Article 1424. When a right to sue upon a civil obligation has lapsed by extinctive prescription, the obliger who voluntarily performs the contract cannot recover what he has delivered or the value of the service he has rendered. Article 1425. When without the knowledge or against the will of the debtor, a third person pays a debt which the obliger is not legally bound to pay because the action thereon has prescribed. But the debtor later voluntarily reimburses the third person. The obliger cannot recover what he has paid. Article 1426. When a minor between 18 and 21 years of age who has entered into a contract without the consent of the parent or guardian, after the annulment of the contract voluntarily returns the whole thing or price received, notwithstanding the fact that he has not been benefited thereby. There is no right to demand the thing or price thus returned. Article 1427. When a minor between 18 and 21 years of age who has entered into a contract without the consent of the parent or guardian voluntarily pays a sum of money or delivers a fungible thing in fulfillment of the obligation, there shall be no right to recover the same from the obligee who has spent or consumed it in good faith. 116OA Article 1428 When, after an action to enforce a civil obligation has failed the defendant, voluntarily performs the obligation, he cannot demand the return of what he has delivered or the payment of the value of the service he has rendered. Article 1429. When a testate or intestate heir voluntarily pays a debt of the decedent, exceeding the value of the property which he received by will or by the law of intestacy from the estate of the deceased, the payment is valid and cannot be rescinded by the heir. Article 1430. When a will is declared void because it has not been executed in accordance with the formalities required by law, but one of the intestate heirs, after the settlement of the debts of the deceased, pays a legacy in compliance with a clause in the defective will, the payment is effective and irrevocable. Title IV. Estoppel. N. Article 1431. Through estoppel an admission or representation is rendered conclusive upon the person making it, and cannot be denied or disproved as against the person relying thereon. Article 1432. The principles of estoppel are hereby adopted insofar as they are not in conflict with the provisions of this code, the Code of Commerce, the Rules of Court and Special Laws. Article 1433. Estoppel may in pays or by deed. Article 1434. When a person who is not the owner of a thing sells or alienates and delivers it, and later the seller or grantor acquires title thereto, such title passes by operation of law to the buyer or grantee. Article 1435. If a person in representation of another sells or alienates a thing, the former cannot subsequently set up his own title as against the buyer or grantee. Article 1436. A lessee or a bailey is estopped from asserting title to the thing leased or received as against the lesser or bailer. Article 1437. When in a contract between third persons concerning a movable property, one of them is misled by a person with 
respect to the ownership or real right over the real estate. The latter is precluded from asserting his legal title or interest therein. Provide all these requisites are present. 1. There must be fraudulent representation or wrongful concealment of facts known to the party. S. Opt. 2. The party precluded must intend that the other should act upon the facts as misrepresented. 3. The party misled must have been unaware of the true facts, and 4. The party defrauded must have acted in accordance with the misrepresentation. Article 1438. One who has allowed another to assume apparent ownership of personal property for the purpose of making any transfer of it cannot, if he received the sum for which a pledge has been constituted, set up his own title to defeat the pledge of the property made by the other to a pledgee who received the same in good faith and for value. Article 1439. Estoppel is effective only as between the parties thereto or their successors in interest. Title V. Trusts N. Chapter 1. General Provisions. Article 1440. A person who establishes a trust is called the truster. One in whom confidence is reposed as regards property for the benefit of another person is known as the trustee and the person for whose benefit the trust has been created is referred to as the beneficiary. Article 1441. Trusts are either express or implied. Express trusts are created by the intention of the truster or of the parties. Implied. Trusts come into being by operation of law. Article 1442. The principles of the general law of trusts. Insofar as they are not in conflict with this code, the Code of Commerce, the rules of court and special laws are hereby adopted. Chapter 2. Express Trusts. Article 1443. No express trusts concerning an immovable or any interest therein may be proved by peril evidence. Article 1444. No particular words are required for the creation of an express trust it being sufficient that a trust is clearly intended. Article 1445. No trust shall fail because the trustee appointed declines the designation, unless the contrary should appear in the instrument constituting the trust. Article 1446. Acceptance by the beneficiary is necessary. Nevertheless, if the trust imposes no onerous condition upon the beneficiary, his acceptance shall be presumed, if there is no proof to the contrary. Chapter 3. Implied Trusts. Article 1447. The enumeration of the following cases of implied trust does not exclude others. Established by the general law of trust, but the limitation laid down in Article 1442 shall be applicable. Article 1448. There is an implied trust when property is sold, and the legal estate is granted to one party but the price is paid by another for the purpose of having the beneficial interest of the property. The former is the trustee, while the latter is the beneficiary. However, if the person to whom the title is conveyed is a child, legitimate or illegitimate, of the one paying the price of the sale, no. Trust is implied by law, it being disputably presumed that there is a gift in favor of the child. Article 1449. There is also an implied trust when a donation is made to a person but it appears that although the legal estate is transmitted to the donny, he nevertheless is either to have no beneficial interest or only a part thereof. Article 1450. If the price of a sale of property is loaned or paid by one person for the benefit of another and the conveyance is made to the lender or payer to secure the payment of the debt, a trust arises by operation of law in favor of the person to whom the money is loaned or for whom it is paid. The latter may redeem the property and compel a conveyance thereof to him. Article 1451 when land passes by succession to any person and he causes the legal title to be put in the name of another, a trust 
is established by implication of law for the benefit of the true owner. Article 1452. If two or more persons agree to purchase property and by common consent the legal title is taken in the name of one of them for the benefit of all, a trust is created by force of law in favor of the others in proportion to the interest of each. Article 1453. When property is conveyed to a person in reliance upon his declared intention to hold it for, or transfer it to another or the grantor, there is an implied trust in favor of the person whose benefit is contemplated. Article 1454. If an absolute conveyance of property is made in order to secure the performance of an obligation of the grantor toward the grantee, a trust by virtue of law is established. If the fulfillment of the obligation is offered by the grantor when it becomes due, he may demand the reconveyance of the property to him. Article 1455. When any trustee, guardian or other person holding a fiduciary relationship uses trust funds for the purchase of property and causes the conveyance to be made to him or to a third person, a trust is established by operation of law in favor of the person to whom the funds belong. Article 1456. If property is acquired through mistake or fraud, the person obtaining it is, by force of law, considered a trustee of an implied trust for the benefit of the person from whom the property comes. Article 1457. An implied trust may be proved by oral evidence. Title V. Sales. Chapter 1. Nature and Form of the Contract. Article 1458. By the contract of sale one of the contracting parties obligates himself to transfer the ownership and to deliver a determinate thing, and the other to pay therefore a price certain in money or its equivalent. A contract of sale may be absolute or conditional. 1445A. Article 1459. The thing must be licit and the vendor must have a right to transfer the ownership thereof at the time it is delivered. N. Article 1460. A thing is determinate when it is particularly designated or physical segregated from all others of the same class. The requisite that a thing be determinate is satisfied if at the time the contract is entered into, the thing is capable of being made determinate without the necessity of a new or further agreement between the parties. N. Article 1461. Things having a potential existence may be the object of the contract of sale. The efficacy of the sale of the mere hope or expectancy is deemed subject to the condition that the thing will come into existence. The sale of a vain hope or expectancy is void. N. Article 1462. The goods which form the subject of a contract of sale may be either existing goods owned or possessed by the seller, or goods to be manufactured, raised, or acquired by the seller after the perfection of the contract of sale, in this title called future goods. There may be a contract of sale of goods, whose acquisition by the seller depends upon a contingency which may or may not happen. N. Article 1463. The sole owner of a thing may sell an undivided interest therein. N. Article 1464. In the case of fungible goods, there may be a sale of an undivided share of a specific mass, though the seller purports to sell and the buyer to buy a definite number, weight or measure of the goods in the mass, and though the number, weight or measure of the goods in the mass, and though the number, weight or measure of the goods in the mass is undetermined. By such a sale the buyer becomes owner in common of such a share of the mass as the number weight or measure bought bears to the number weight or measure of the mass. If the mass contains less than the number weight or measure bought the buyer becomes the owner of the whole mass and the seller is bound to make good the deficiency from goods of the same kind and quality, unless a contrary intent appears, n. 
Article 1465. Things subject to a resolutory condition may be the object of the contract of sale. N. Article 1466. In construing a contract containing provisions characteristic of both the contract of sale and of the contract of agency to sell, the essential clauses of the whole instrument shall be considered. N. Article 1467. A contract for the delivery at a certain price of an article which the vendor in the ordinary course of his business manufactures or procures for the general market, whether the same is on hand at the time or not, is a contract of sale, but if the goods are to be manufactured specially for the customer and upon his special order, and not for the general market, it is a contract. For a piece of work, n. Article 1468, if the consideration of the contract consists partly in money, and partly in another thing, the transaction shall be characterized by the manifest intention of the parties. If such intention does not clearly appear, it shall be considered a barter if the value of the thing given as a part of the consideration exceeds the amount of the money or its equivalent, otherwise, it is a sale. 1446A. Article 1469. In order that the price may be considered certain, it shall be sufficient that it be so with reference to another thing certain, or that the determination thereof be left to the judgment of a special person or persons. Should such person or persons be unable or unwilling to fix it, the contract shall be inefficacious, unless the parties subsequently agree upon the price. If the third person or persons acted in bad faith or by mistake, the courts may fix the price. Where such third person or persons are prevented from fixing the price or terms by fault of the seller or the buyer, the party not in fault may have such remedies against the party in fault as are allowed the seller or the buyer. As the case may be, 1447a. Article 1470. Gross inadequacy of price does not affect a contract of sale, except as it may indicate a defect in the consent, or that the parties really intended a donation or some other act or contract. N. Article 1471. If the price is simulated, the sale is void. But the act may be shown to have been in reality a donation, or some other act or contract. N. Article 1472. The price of securities, grain, liquids, and other things shall also be considered certain, when the price fixed is that which the thing sold would have on a definite day, or in a particular exchange or market, or when an amount is fixed above or below the price on such day, or in such exchange or market, provided said amount be certain. 1448. Article 1473. The fixing of the price can never be left to the discretion of one of the contracting parties. However, if the price fixed by one of the parties is accepted by the other, the sale is perfected. 1449A. Article 1474. Where the price cannot be determined in accordance with the preceding articles, or in any other manner, the contract is inefficacious. However, if the thing or any part thereof has been delivered to and appropriated by the buyer he must pay a reasonable price therefore. What is a reasonable price is a question of fact dependent on the circumstances of each particular case. N. Article 1475. The contract of sale is perfected at the moment there is a meeting of minds upon the thing which is the object of the contract and upon the price. From that moment, the parties may reciprocally demand performance, subject to the provisions of the law governing the form of contracts. 1450A. Article 1476. In the case of a sale by auction. 1. Where goods are put up for sale by auction in lots. Each lot is the subject of a separate contract of sale. 2. A sale by auction is perfected when the auctioneer announces its perfection by the foul of 
the hammer, or in other customary manner. Until such announcement is made, any bidder may retract his bid, and the auctioneer may withdraw the goods from the sale unless the auction has been announced to be without reserve. 3. A right to bid may be reserved expressly by or on behalf of the seller, unless otherwise provided by law or by stipulation. 4. Where notice has not been given that a sale by auction is subject to a right to bid on behalf of the seller, it shall not be lawful for the seller to bid himself or to employ or induce any person to bid at such sale on his behalf or for the auctioneer to employ or induce any person to bid at such sale on behalf of the seller or knowingly to take any bid from the seller or any person employed by him. Any sale contravening this rule may be treated as fraudulent by the buyer. N. Article 1477. The ownership of the thing sold shall be transferred to the vendee upon the actual or constructive delivery thereof. N. Article 1478. The parties may stipulate that ownership in the thing shall not pass to the purchaser until he has fully paid the price. N. Article 1479. A promise to buy and sell a determinate thing for a price certain is reciprocally demandable. An accepted unilateral promise to buy or to sell a determinate thing for a price certain is binding upon the promise or if the promise is supported by a consideration distinct from the price. 1451A. Article 1480. Any injury to or benefit from the thing sold after the contract has been perfected, from the moment of the perfection of the contract to the time of delivery, shall be governed by Articles 1163 to 1165, and 1262. This rule shall apply to the sale of fungible things, made independently and for a single price, or without consideration of their weight, number, or measure. Should fungible things be sold for a price fixed according to weight, number, or measure, the risk shall not be imputed to the vendee until they have been weighed, counted, or measured and delivered, unless the latter has incurred in delay, 1452A. Article 1481. In the contract of sale of goods by description or by sample, the contract may be rescinded if the bulk of the goods delivered do not correspond with the description or the sample, and if the contract be by sample as well as description, it is not sufficient that the bulk of goods correspond with the sample if they do not also correspond with the description. The buyer shall have a reasonable opportunity of comparing the bulk with the description or the sample. N. Article 1482. Whenever earnest money is given in a contract of sale, it shall be considered as part of the price and as proof of the perfection of the contract. 1454A. Article 1483, subject to the provisions of the statute of frauds and of any other applicable statute, a contract of sale may be made in writing, or by word of mouth, or partly in writing and partly by word of mouth, or may be inferred from the conduct of the parties. N. Article 1484, in a contract of sale of personal property, the price of which is payable in installments, the vendor may exercise any of the following remedies. 1. Exact fulfillment of the obligation, should the vendee fail to pay. 2. Cancel the sale, should the vendee's failure to pay cover two or more installments. 3. Foreclose the chattel mortgage on the thing sold, if one has been constituted. Should the vendee's failure to pay cover two or more installments. In this case, he shall have no further action against the purchaser to recover any unpaid balance of the price. Any agreement to the contrary shall be void. 1454AA Article 1485 The preceding article shall be applied to contracts purporting to be leases of personal property with option to buy. When the lesser has deprived the lessee of the possession or enjoyment of the thing,
1454AA. Article 1486. In the case referred to in the two preceding articles, a stipulation that the installments or rents paid shall not be returned to the vendee or lessee shall be valid insofar as the same may not be unconscionable under the circumstances. N. Article 1487. The expenses for the execution and registration of the sale shall be borne by the vendor, unless there is a stipulation. To the contrary, 1455A. Article 1488. The expropriation of property for public use is governed by special laws. 1456. Chapter 2. Capacity to buy or sell. Article 1489. All persons who are authorized in this code to obligate themselves may enter into a contract of sale, saving the modifications contained in the following articles. Where necessaries are those sold and delivered to a minor or other person without capacity to act, he must pay a reasonable price. Therefore, necessaries are those referred to in Article 290, 1457a. Article 1490, the husband and the wife cannot sell property to each other, except 1. When a separation of property was agreed upon in the marriage settlements, or 2. When there has been a judicial separation of property under Article 191, 1458A. Article 1491, the following persons cannot acquire by purchase even at a public or judicial auction, either in person or through the mediation of another. 1. The guardian, the property of the person or persons who may be under his guardianship. 2. Agents, the property whose administration or sale may have been entrusted to them, unless the consent of the principal has been given. 3. Executors and administrators, the property of the estate under administration. 4. Public officers and employees, the property of the state or of any subdivision thereof, or of any government-owned or controlled corporation or institution, the administration of which has been entrusted to them, this provision shall apply to judges and government experts who, in any manner whatsoever, take part in the sale. 5. Justices, judges, prosecuting attorneys, clerks of superior and inferior courts, and other officers and employees connected with the administration of justice. The property and rights in litigation are levied upon an execution before the court within whose jurisdiction or territory they exercise their respective functions. This prohibition includes the act of acquiring by assignment and shall apply to lawyers with respect to the property and rights which may be the object of any litigation in which they may take part by virtue of their profession. 6. Any others specially disqualified by law. 1459A. Article 1492. The prohibitions in the two preceding articles are applicable to sales and legal redemption, compromises and Renunciations. N. Chapter 3. Effects of the contract when the thing sold has been lost. Article 1493. If at the time the contract of sale is perfected, the thing which is the object of the contract has been entirely lost, the contract shall be without any effect. But if the thing should have been lost in part only, the vendee may choose between withdrawing from the contract and demanding the remaining part, paying its price in proportion to the total sum agreed upon, 1460A. Article 1494, where the parties purport a sale of specific goods, and the goods without the knowledge of the seller have perished, in part or have wholly or in a material part so deteriorated in quality as to be substantially Changed in character, the buyer may at his option treat the sale 1. as avoided, or 2. as valid in all of the existing goods, or in so much thereof as have not deteriorated, and as binding the buyer to pay the agreed price for the goods in which the ownership will pass, if the sale was divisible. N. 
Chapter 4. Obligations of the Vendor. Section 1. General Provisions. Article 1495. The vendor is bound to transfer the ownership of and deliver, as well as warrant the thing which is the object of the sale. 1461A. Article 1496. The ownership of the thing sold is acquired by the vendee from the moment it is delivered to him in any of the ways specified in Articles 1497 to 1501 or in any other manner signifying an agreement that the possession is transferred from the vendor to the vendee. N. Section 2. Delivery of the thing sold. Article 1497. The thing sold shall be understood as delivered when it is placed in the control and possession of the vendee. 1462A. Article 1498. When the sale is made through a public instrument, the execution thereof shall be equivalent to the delivery of the thing which is the object of the contract. If from the deed the contrary does not appear or cannot clearly be inferred with regard to movable property, its delivery may also be made by the delivery of the keys of the place or depository where it is stored or kept. 1463A Article 1499 the delivery of movable property may likewise be made by the mere consent or agreement of the contracting parties. If the thing sold cannot be transferred to the possession of the vendee at the time of the sale, or if the latter already had it in his possession for any other reason, 1463A, Article 1500, there may also be tradition constitutum, possessorium, 